Carmelo Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you, my brother. I feel like I'm the only person who says Los Angeles Laker, right? Uh, probably. Yeah, probably, that's like, probably. a friend of mine said that to me the other day. He's like, you don't watch basketball much, do you? I was like, I do. He's like, then why do you say Los Angeles Lakers? <laughs> I was like, because the Los Angeles Lakers. He's like, well, it's the LA Lakers. I was like, well, it's the Los Angeles Lakers. But the either way. The Lakers. Yeah, the, call, La the Lakers. Call, call, call it the Lakers. You I like know. giving it like the full name. I don't, know, I don't know what it is for me. It's just like it makes it, it, makes it bigger for me. Whatever works for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. Yes, yes. And um, congratulations on, on adding author to, I mean, like a really impressive list of titles that you already hold. I will say, I think like, like many people, I opened the book thinking, okay, Carmelo Anthony, book, is going to be basketball. You're going to teach me how to do those moves. You're going to teach me how to fake. You're going to teach me. Right. And yet, it did the exact opposite. It's like, this isn't the story of the Carmelo Anthony we know. This is the story of the Carmelo Anthony that gets to the person that we know. Absolutely. Tell me why you chose to write this book. I just think everybody knows that part of the story. Like, they know the basketball part of the story. They, they, they know, you know, the business side right. of Carmelo Anthony. But they don't know what it took to get to that part. They don't know what, it, what I had to go through and endure and, and deal with and see and hear uh, before that. Right, so we, we talk about the, the 10,000 hour rule, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been doing that. I've been putting my 10,000 hours in, probably a little bit more in order to get to that point. So by the time I shook David Stern's hand, that was the story that I always wanted to tell. Right, right, right. When you read this book, Where Tomorrow's On Promised, I think the title couldn't be more perfect because that is Carmelo's journey. You grew up in a world where there is no tomorrow that is promised. No, none. And there's no journey that's pre-written. When you were writing the book and you're telling us of the story and the world you grew up in and everything that was, was did you take a moment to realize what you've actually experienced to get where you've gotten to? Not until I, I read it. Not until I was done writing wow. it. And I read it because I didn't look at it as a place of trouble or a place of, of harm or just, I looked at it, it was life. It's where you live. It, it was life. Yeah. I, I woke up every day, I saw the same people, went to the same food spots, hung on the same block, the same neighborhood, went to the same school. That was my life every single day. Right. So I didn't look at it as it was difficulty. Like, it was just life. We had to deal with life. We was going through life. What I was going through, my neighbor was going through. The guy across the street was going right, through the same right, thing. Right. So yeah. We, yeah. We, was a very, we became a very tight-knit community. Carmelo, one of the most signature names, like, in the world, you know, whether it's in hip-hop tra tracks, whether it's in basketball, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Mellow My Man. It's, 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 it, it's signature. It is yeah. you. You, at one time, wanted to be Tyrone Johnson. <laughs> Who is Tyrone Johnson? I have no idea. I have no idea. I didn't want to be Tyrone Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't understand my name. Like, it was just, you gotta understand, let me break it down. You was, I came from Brooklyn in mm -hmm. Red Hook, where it was predominantly black, Puerto Ricans, mm -hmm. Italians was in the back, uh, Irish was in the back. So we was very diverse. When you go to Baltimore, it's all black. Right. So to hear a name, Carmelo, like you, I'm like, they not gonna understand what that really is. Uh -huh. you know, so they gonna, they gonna butcher my name. They gonna, Caramello, Caramel, whatever they, whatever they gonna do, they gonna butcher the name. So the teacher comes around and she passed the index cards. You gotta put your name on there first day of school. And, Somebody else's name was on the board from the previous class. And I just looked up and I was like, my name is Tyrone Johnson. And I, I took Tyrone and then added Johnson because that was a very, yeah, it was a common it was a name. Common name. Yeah. So Tyrone Johnson, and that's why I became for three days. What I loved is when you talk about how you came to love your name, you know? So you, you, get, you get in trouble at school. Yeah. The teachers call your mom to the school. They go like, yo, we got to deal with your son. She gets there and they go like, Tyrone has been getting up to some shit. And she goes, who's Tyrone? <laughs> so I got in trouble and I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. I right. hope kids ain't listening to this. But <laughs> I, I, ran, I, I knew what time my mother had to go to work. So yeah. I ran home and I made sure I was there for the phone call to tell my mother. So I like this. My mom wasn't, wasn't there. So I... Knew the phone was going to ring. You're trying to get ahead you, of the whipping. That's you see the caller ID. Yeah, yeah. I don't answer the phone. Right. My mom don't get it. I still go to school the next day as if I was going to school. Right. Backpack, uniform on, in the line, about to walk into the school. I'm the last one. Everybody walks in. I, I stay outside in the yard. As I'm outside, for some reason, maybe this was, you know, this was the, the a higher power telling me, giving me a message. 
my mom comes driving down the street. And I peek around the corner and we catch eye contact. Oh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't make, I couldn't make this up. So that's how she found out that, you that I, 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 was, I wasn't in school. So she took me back to school and I was asking questions. And that's when they told her, hey, Miss Johnson, <laughs> <laughs> your son Tyrone has been suspended, suspended for X, Y, Z. And she's uh, like, My, I don't know any Tyrone. This is Carmelo Anthony right here. Everyone knows you from the basketball court, but people have started knowing you in different areas as well. You know, I, I remember just from South Africa, mm -hmm. you getting involved in basketball philanthropy around the world. Yeah. You know, you would, you would come out, you would host clinics, you would, you would do it all over Africa, you would you just get involved. Mm -hmm. That's how we knew Carmelo, not just from the NBA. You've, you've been a big proponent of that, getting to the kids. But what I loved in, in, in this book is, you talk about how you, you never bought into the concept that like the sport will just save you. You know, everyone will be like, oh, get the kids into the sport. It saves them. It'll save you. It'll save you. But, but you didn't buy into that. You, you, never, you, you never discard, the, you know, the things that happen to you because of basketball. But you don't buy into the myth. Tell me more about that. Well, I just, I just knew in wh where I come from. And again, I, I only could speak on my experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so I just knew what I was up against. I knew the odds that, that we all was up against growing up in that. And... It's, it's a number game. You, you're one of X amount of, of, of players who have a chance to make it to the NBA, of thousands of players, of right. millions of people, millions of basketball players in the world. You're one of them. So to fathom that, it's like, that's impossible. And definitely they ain't not coming back to the wire. Right. They're not coming to the wire to come, to come get one of us. So I kind of just like kind of, I didn't want to hold on to that. I haven't watched basketball my entire life. Started loving basketball when I moved to the U.S., got into it, you know, just the stories. And one thing that, I, that, that I've always noticed just as an outsider is how often people have written you off. You know, people be like, well, it's over for Carmelo. Got to hang it up now. Absolutely. Well, you got to hang it up now. Carmelo dropping this many points. <laughs> I guess it's not over. Nope, it's over now. He's got to hang it up. This guy. And I, you must remember, I'm just coming into it. So I'm like, is it over? Is it not over? It doesn't right. seem to be over, but it's over, but it's right. not over. Like, it feels like you lived a life where you were written off. It, it, lives, it feels like you came from a world that was written off. Do you think that's part of the reason that you just keep putting your head down and making the plays? Is that is absolutely one thousand percent? Yeah, and, and hence why the name is "Where Tomorrow's Are on Promise." Like that, that has a wide range of meaning when 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 you hear why, mm -hmm, "Where Tomorrow's mm -hmm. Are on Promise," and that's a prime example right there. I've, I've always felt like I had to like do extra and do more than that, than the next person. Right. Uh, I always felt like I had to. Not be louder, but I had to show people a lot more of, of what I can do, mm -hmm. my talents and my skill and, you know, just being me. And I, I was battling that for a long time and, uh, because I didn't know who I was as a person. Right. And when you dealing with those type of issues and those, those, that mentality, it can mess you up. And I always, I'm in a competitive sport anyway, as Definitely. it is. So yeah. I don't want to be competitive in every aspect of my life. I want to come home. I want to relax. I want to turn the TV on, listen to music, drink some wine. And I don't want to be competitive all day, every day. And that's what it does to you, man. It just makes you competitive because when you feel like your back is against the wall and people always doubt you and, you know, you're not going to do this. Oh, he's back. Like you said, he's back. Oh, he's not back. He need to go. He need to come back. Or what is he doing? It's like, where's Waldo? And that's not something I, I, I don't want to live my life like that. You were finding your peace. I was finding my peace. And where I'm at now, I think I've found some of my peace. I'm still on that journey of finding, mm -hmm. you know, being, being peaceful uh, just in, in, in life. But that takes time. And I, I want people to understand that when they read in this story. Like, to find your peace, that it takes a long time. It's I'm 37 process. years old. Right. And I just started over the past couple of years wow. to look and search for that peace. 37 years old, and you are starting another journey, right? maybe one of the most anticipated parts of your career, which is crazy at 37, right. you know, because you are joining the Lakers, mm -hmm. say the Lakers, <laughs> joining the Lakers. And um, again, people are writing everything off, you know? I mean, LeBron has talked about this. He's, he has fun with it yeah, on Twitter course, and everything. You know, people are like, oh, it's the retirement home of basketball <laughs> players. You know, you got Dwight, you got Carmelo, you've got LeBron, you got Rajon Rondo, you got, this is, this is retirement, this is a right. retirement home. And LeBron has said, oh, we'll show you what old men can Absolutely. do. You feel, it feels like you've been in this position before, but it feels like it's a completely different story every single time. Why did you say yes? Why did you think that this would be different? And what are you hoping to achieve? Is, is there something you're trying to prove or are you just in a different state of mind going into this next season? It's, it's nothing that I'm trying to prove. If, if I wanted to pick LA, 
I'd have been at peace walking away from the game, knowing that I gave it everything I could and I still couldn't win a championship. I would have been at peace with that. I'd have been good. But now that I'm in the Lakers, I can't be at peace with not winning the championship. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's the, you got to change your, you know, you got to change your way of thinking. You got to change your perspective. But being out there at this point in time in my career, we hear all, we hear all of it. We hear that they old and the senior citizen home for uh -huh, basketball, uh -huh. but we just know what we bring to the game and we, what we bring to the table. And I, I say we're wiser, like we're wise. We're not, we're not old. 37 is, is young. 36 is, 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 is young. I feel that. It's only old in the, in the sports world, uh -huh, in the basketball uh -huh, world. Uh -huh. So like LeBron said, like other guys said, man, it's just, just watch and see. And I think people will enjoy the show. Hey, man, I know I'll be one of the people watching. Congratulations on your book. Congratulations on the story. I hope everybody reads it because, as you said, you know, it'll connect with not just your journey, but how hard that journey actually is and how many people can relate to the story that gets you to where you are today. Absolutely. It's, universe. it's a universal message. I'll say that. I appreciate you, my dude. Thank, Thank you, you so much brother. for joining me on the show. Indeed. Don't forget, people, Carmelo's book, Where Tomorrow's Aren't Promised, is available right now.